Hi guys, we're back and today we're going to do some projectile problems. So this first one, we have a projectile that is launched at an angle of 30 degrees and we know that the launch velocity is 49 meters per second. We are supposed to find what is the maximum height at this point at the top of its trajectory. So what we want to find is delta dy from the ground. So what we need to the way we need to figure this out is I'm going to break the launch velocity into components. So we'll change colors here to do that. So I've got a component this way and a component this way. This one's going to be VL cosine theta and this one's going to be VL sine theta. And in addition, let's write down what we, what we know, that at this top location, at the highest point, the velocity of the projectile will only be in the horizontal velocity. The vertical velocity, so this is going to be the, the horizontal velocity, it will be something. Uh, it'll actually, well, we know what it'll be. It'll be VL cosine theta because it's constant. It doesn't change. But the vertical velocity, on the other hand, at this top point is going to be zero. Now, th that might take some thinking, but if you think about a, pr a projectile that is thrown straight up into the air, it goes up and it comes back down. At this point, at the top, the, v the vertical velocity is zero, the velocity at the top. So it's the same here. The vertical velocity is always changing. The horizontal velocity is always constant. So we know that v vertical equals zero. Um, and we also know, so perhaps instead of writing it like v vertical, why don't I just say vertical header and now I can say v final equals zero. This makes, this I think makes it much more clear because everything under this heading is now vertical. In addition, I also know the initial velocity, which is here which is VL sine theta, okay? Um, and, of course, we know that the acceleration is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and we're looking for, we need to find delta D. That's this, that's what we're looking for. So, the equation that fits this perfectly is, <coughs> v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta d. This is the kinematics equation. Notice there's no time here, and this is the only way we're going to find displacement. So I need to rearrange this equation now to solve for delta d. I'm going to take this uh, vi squared, take it to the other side, in which case it'll become negative. And then I'm going to divide both sides by a 2a. So this will be divided by 2a, and, the, and this side now be, just becomes delta d. And there's my equation. I can now plug my values into it to solve for the answer. And so let's put in uh, vf is 0 minus vi, which is uh, here, VL sine theta divided by two times negative 9.8. Now, I, I'll substitute the values for VL and sine theta now, and I'll get 49 sine 30 divided by, oops, divided by 2 times negative 
and my answer will be okay let's back up uh, I made a boo-boo we have to fix this so notice what did I forget to do yeah the zero that's okay because that's zero squared but it's vi squared so I forgot to square this the negative sign is outside that square so in fact it's 49 squared there and sine squared theta. Now we'll get the correct answer. So the answer ends up being 30.6 meters. So that's the max height for uh, this projectile at this point. Oops. Okay, so let's try another problem now. Okay, actually, uh, there's a second part to this problem. And the question is asking is how far will the object travel horizontally so once again in this case we have theta we have VL and it comes back to the same height and we've already solved this problem before in the previous lesson so we don't need to do it again we can just uh, use the equation that was given to us which is the range equation because the range equation works for when the projectile uh, is launched and comes back to the same height and the range equation was VL squared sine 2 theta divided by G so in this case that's going to equal uh, what was my launch velocity again? It was 49. So 49 squared sine 2 and theta was 30 degrees. 2 times 30 divided by 9.8. And that's going to give me 212 meters, approximately, some decimal places. But that's how far it goes to one, two meters horizontally until it hits the ground again. OK, so the next question states that uh, a ball is hit at a 45 degrees angle and travels 98 meters away. The question is how, what was the original velocity of the ball? So what we have, let's write down what we've got here. We've got the situation where a ball is um, launched like that where our theta is equal to 45 degrees and we don't know what the launch velocity is that's what we want to find but we do know that after it comes back to the ground oops well that's supposed to be straight um, I kind of messed that up let me try that again A little bit better. Uh, after it comes back down to the ground, it has gone 98 meters. The question is, what is VL? So again, we don't need to solve this from scratch anymore because we can use our range equation. And range is VL squared sine 2 theta divided by G. However, in this case, we are solving for VL. So we do have to do a little bit of algebra to solve for the launch velocity. 
So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to multiply both sides by g. I'm going to get rg equaling vL squared sine 2 theta. And now I'm going to divide both sides by sine 2 theta. rg divided by sine 2 theta equaling vL squared. And then I'm going to take the square root. And so if I get the square root of rg over sine 2 theta, that's going to give me vL. So um, I can now plug in my values. r, the range is 98, times g, which is 9.8, divided by sine and the angle is 45, so 2 times 45 is 90, right? You can say 2 times 45. And by the way, sine 90 is a 1, so really we're dividing by 1 doesn't really make a difference. So the answer ends up 31, it ends up being 31 meters per second. And that's the launch velocity. So that that's a very typical problem. You can utilize the range equation. Uh, and so it's probably it's a good idea to memorize this equation. That way you don't have to go through the derivation of it. And it is a pretty simple equation to memorize. It's not a tough one. Our next question is a ball is kicked at 17 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. How much time before it hits the ground? Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. So the solution to this problem, let's draw a little picture here. We've got our angle of 40 degrees and our launch velocity is 17 meters per second. And we're going to go like that. Well, kind of. And essentially, we want to know how much time this thing spends in the air. So the let's break this guy up first into horizontal and more importantly vertical. The vertical component is what we're going to use to solve this. So it's going to be VL sine theta. And let's actually go straight to the vertical solution and the equation we're going to use is the one that has time in it with acceleration and that is delta D equals one half a t squared plus v i t. Now notice that this is the this is d i that's the original position and this point here is d f and notice they're at the same height Therefore, we, can, we know that delta D vertically must equal zero. So now I can put a zero in for delta D. And I'm going to solve for T. But what's really nice about this is that because it's a zero here, I can avoid the quadratic formula simply by dividing by T. So if I divide this by T, divide this by T, and divide this by T, I'll get zero equals one half a t plus v i. And now I'm going to solve for t. So let's do that. Let's write out the equation. I'm going to take this term here and move it to the other side. So I'll just write it up here. I'll get negative v i equals one half a t. And then I want to solve for t, so I'll multiply both sides by 2 and divide by a. So I get negative 2vi divided by a equals t. Now I can put my values in. Uh, I got negative 2 times, now my vi is right here. That's vl sine theta divided by a, which is negative 9.8. And so if I put in my, th my values for uh, VL and theta, I've got negative 2 times 17 
times sine 40 divided by 9.8. And when I do that, I get the answer of 2.23 seconds. And so that is my answer for the amount of time that the object uh, stays in the air before hitting the ground again. And that's the end of this uh, projectile motion lesson. Bye.